Hi, happy Pinktober and welcome to Java with Jennifer. I have a great guest today, Edna Brown. She is a two year cancer survivor, breast cancer survivor, and she has an amazing story we'd like to share today. I am the breast cancer navigator here at Halifax Health Center for Oncology, and I just can't wait for everyone to hear your story. Alrighty. So tell me, what was it like when you heard the words, we need more imaging after you had your mammogram? Um, I was definitely in denial, mm -hmm. um, and I held out hope at that point that I was not going to have breast cancer. Um, that there was some kind of a mistake. Um, I was fortunate because I elected to have a 3D mammogram, which I needed to have because I have, I did have dense breast tissue. Mm -hmm. So every year when I got my mammogram, I would get the little blurb at the bottom that said, you have some density in your tissue, and that mm -hmm. means that we can't really visualize all of this and, and ascertain that everything is fine. Um, and so when we got the option to have a, a 3D mammogram, um, that was recommended to me and thankfully I said yes. So when those results came back, I was, I was in denial when the doctor's office called, um, but they did explain to me that there's a very low false positive for those kinds of, of mammograms and um, so I was definitely, it was surreal. Mm -hmm. It was surreal. Mm -hmm. um, and, it, and anything like that, a life-changing diagnosis, or anything challenging in life that's life changing, it just takes time just to settle in. Right, right, right. Yeah. right. So, um, so years past, you had two D mammograms. Yes, I always since the age of forty had two D mammograms. Mm -hmm. um, every year would get the the results back. Everything was clear, but obviously the blurb about the density in the breast tissue. Right. So, um, as you know. Um, <laughs> It, everything uh, looked very early, stage one, very easy. Um, after the 3D mammogram and initial imaging, and then after surgery, we found out that that wasn't actually the case, that things had gotten a little bit more progressed into my lymph nodes. So it was just a lifesaver to me that mm -hmm. I had that 3D mammogram that year. I don't even like to think about what would have happened. So what made you decide to do the 3D mammogram? Because of the fact that there was that little disclaimer mm -hmm. on every year's mammogram results. I just thought, you know, I just need to be sure that everything is okay. Right. Now we have the technology to kind of do that cross-section mm -hmm. of you, of the tissue. Why would I not do that? So, so it does add only about seven seconds to your mammogram when you choose the 3D mammogram. And the difference between the 2D and 3D is the fact that when they take your mammogram, they're doing four millimeter slices through the breast, so it creates a 3D image for the radiologist to see through that dense tissue. Um, it's pretty much standard protocol now with most mammograms. However, some insurances don't cover it. It is a $50 copay. Yes. Um, worth every penny. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So I got the news on the day after Christmas. Um, Timing. Yeah. Uh, 2017 mm -hmm. that indeed the biopsy was positive mm -hmm. um, and my family was with me when I got that phone call and so that was um, it was just very nice to have everybody there with me um, and then the first call I made was to you. <laughs> I guess you did. <laughs> we have a long history together. We do. We do. Been friends since sixth grade. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, um, so I think it would be a good idea. I knew to call you, right, right. But maybe everybody doesn't know what you do, right, and what so, services you provide. Thank you. Um, so, as a breast navigator, my job is to take a person from diagnosis or from that early stage crazy imaging piece, biopsy, MRI, ultrasound, things like that get really kind of scary. Um, so people can pick me up early in the, the imaging part and I take them through that diagnosis to meet their surgeon, to meet their oncologist, to expedite appointments, um, lots of TLC, um, lots of pink hugs I like to say. We kind of go through that process and as a navigator I can help them with financial um, issues. A lot of people are struggling now with COVID that they can't afford their imaging, um, some co-pays, um, things of that sort. So, I can help them with grants, 
I can help them with wigs if they need it, um, transportation, Meals on Wheels, the, the, the list is endless. And the beautiful part about my position is that HealthX Health provides my services to the community completely free, complimentary. So that to me is absolutely amazing because I can love everybody and don't have to worry about money. So that's the best part. Um, so that, thank you very much. That is exactly what I do. And yeah. I'm sure I bugged you a ton. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sure it was the other way around. Um, for me, your services were like a security blanket, oh, you thanks. know, because yeah. I knew that even though I was calling the doctor's office, maybe I didn't get a call back right away. Mm -hmm. You have to go through different people to sure, get, sure. I could make one phone call to you and say, you know, I need to be, I need to understand this result better. <laughs> I need to, your help with getting in to see this doctor or to answer this question that I have at this point in the process. And you, so you were a touchstone for that. Thanks. And that really, it just gives a family, I, in my experience, so much comfort to know that there's somebody who's going to answer the phone and, and help that, Thank you. that day Thank you, or as soon you. as they can. So mm -hmm. um, I think that, I don't think enough people know what a blessing you are oh, to thank you so much. our community. I, um, I really do pride myself on trying to be available same day when people call and return phone calls. I work crazy hours, but that's what it's about. Not everybody's an eight Well, to it's not just what you do, it's who you are. Oh, that's the difference. Don't make me cry. Please. Okay, I don't sorry. have waterproof <laughs> mascara on today. I didn't think to wear that, so don't make me cry. <laughs> um, so after you got your diagnosis and you met your surgeon, yes. let us know how that first meeting went with your surgeon. Obviously, Again, anxiety. It was so much anxiety right. and it was so surreal. It was right. a little bit of an out-of-body experience because I had none of the risk factors and no family history. And none. I think that's really important that people Speaking know. Speaking on that, let me just poke in for a second. 85% um, of women, 85% of women that are diagnosed with breast cancer do not have a family history or a genetic component. Yes. That's crazy. Yes. That's crazy. So go back. Sorry, go back. Um, so meeting with the surgeon and talking through the mm -hmm. options, he was exceptionally helpful. He understood my anxiety. Mm -hmm. He was, he expedited. I, I opted immediately for surgery mm -hmm. um, and then kind of get the lay of the land and see, you know, what the situation was. Um, as far as all the pathology report revealed mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm really glad that that that's that was my choice so he, he um, coordinated with the plastic surgeon to get the surgery on the schedule really within just you a had couple amazing of weeks. surgeons everything just fell into place so. dr. Mark white and dr. Ashley Lentz yes they amazing awesome. surgeon incredible yes um, so uh, he basically <laughs> cleared a day to, to get me into because his wife had had a scare right an amgram right and, in, and so people understand this mm -hmm. is you know it's the anxiety level is incredible so um that was really comforting as well and he also understood my choice i i opted for a bilateral mastectomy mm -hmm. and he, he didn't try to talk me out of that he didn't say that i was overreacting he understood right i did not want to go through this every year for the rest of my life and right. i wanted no breast tissue <laughs> so um that was my choice and then after we got the pathology back and we realized it had mm -hmm. already spread into my lymph nodes pretty significantly um then I was lucky enough to be connected with Dr. Ruby Deveris yes. as my oncologist. And total we, rock star she is. She is incredible. Yes. Love her. Um, so, and I did, I went to get a second opinion at Mayo mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. chemo was recommended as well as radiation. I wanted to make sure it was a pretty tough chemo. I wanted to make sure that it was, it was really necessary. Sure. Um, not only did they know Dr. Deveris when I went to mm -hmm. my second opinion at Mayo, <laughs> but they were like, just go home and you're in great hands. You, totally. don't, you don't need to, you just totally. need to do what she tells you to do. And so I did. Right. And that's the same thing that Jennifer told me. Just do what she tells you to yeah. do. Stop <laughs> just checking, do it, Just it. do it. Just do it. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So that was, that was how things progressed. So for mm -hmm. the better part of the year, I was under treatment right. for 2018 finished treatment, just celebrated my two year anniversary Yesterday. in remission, and I finished in 2018 right before the Making Strides Against Breast Cancer Walk, so mm -hmm. I was able to get my survivor medal, 
and That's participate huge, and it? fundraise. It was really symbolic. It was so powerful it's huge. to kind of wrap that whole chapter up. And here's your Survivor Medal, and then, you know, just kind of feel like, okay. I Better can, than Olympic gold. It is. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> Um, so uh, that was my journey and and so since that time um, mm -hmm. I've been volunteering in the community as an advocate and as um, a, just a support person right. I am a counselor so I try to work mm -hmm. with breast cancer patients as much as possible um, and I also volunteer my time with American Cancer Society and making strides yeah, against kind of breast cancer. Yeah, told you. <laughs> yeah, Not really. I was maybe a little <laughs> roughly recruited. <laughs> roughly um, recruited. <laughs> so I said, you'll be perfect. We'll have so much fun together. Let's do this. I'm the survivor chair for the um, Making Strides here locally, and she's like perfect to help me with stuff and quite frankly I think you do a little more than I do when it comes to boots on the ground <laughs> um, so we really had a lot of fun this year even though we couldn't walk the stage and we couldn't see the sea of pink and have 12,000 of our best friends dressed in pink yeah. we did um, sponsor Halifax Health did sponsor the Hope in Motion pink car parade for survivors that was amazing. Yeah, you and your husband were there. Yes. Um, we had over a hundred volunteers. Really emotional. Wasn't it great? It was. So it was. we had this amazing committee um, for making strides this year, and there are so many people that I can't mention because I can't remember everybody's name right now. <sighs> but they're all fantastic, and I'm super, super excited to say that we were able to gift amazing Hope Survivor bags to over 120 survivors that drove through the car parade. That to me, I can't even tell you. That to me was so amazing. I mean, I choked up, I saw my, my people. The only thing I missed that was so hard was the hugs. I am yes. such a hugger, yeah, I'm is. such a hugger, but I hugged you a whole bunch. <laughs> I'm such a hugger that I, it was hard not to hug and put the metal around their neck like I have for all these years. Um, but it's so amazing to see them in the car and they're crying and they're enjoying it and they're like, thank you. And you were very pivotal, you and your husband, on getting a lot of donations for the bag. So cheers to that, my cheers. friends. Cheers, yeah. No, that um, was a lot of fun. There were a lot of people in the community that were happy oh, to support so great. It was us so great. and to support our survivors and let them know mm -hmm. that they're cheering them on and rooting us on. And yeah. um, it's just a really, it's an incredible community it to is be part of. It is. And Health Excel does so much to give and give and give even yeah. though we're the community hospital and you know we kind of have to take all which is great they still do it they go above and beyond and give and give and give and give and that's one of the reasons why i i can't imagine myself anywhere else because that's what i want to do yeah i want to do so you were talking about how you volunteer and give back yes. i have noticed over the last two years you're so unbelievably passionate about becoming an advocate i am can you tell I me am. a little bit about what you want to do with that? Um, well, my hope is, and, and anytime anything, mm -hmm. anytime life brings challenges, I always try to ask myself, you know, how can I grow and deepen um, who I am and, and what I believe in, and how can I help going forward? Um, and so, for me, I needed a little time out after I finished treatment, as mm -hmm. you know. Yep. I stayed away from everything pink for a little bit. Um, I just kind of wanted me, to. <laughs> I'm okay. I just kind of wanted to pretend that whole thing didn't happen for a little while. Right. Um, and I just needed to process it and let it sink in. And, and it is a process. And it's okay, you know, for people to give themselves grace mm -hmm. when they're going through a tough time and say, you know, I need a time out and I just need to sort of regroup and rejuvenate. And then when I came back mm -hmm. um, from my little break, I was ready to get to work. And so I was very passionate about education and incredibly uh, wanted to beat the drum about the 3D mammogram yes. because I do believe it saved my life. Absolutely um, did. And so that just kind of segued into becoming more active with actual mm -hmm. survivors, providing supportive counseling, helping with resources when needed. Um, and my hope is to become certified as a breast cancer advocate mm -hmm. um, through the National Breast Cancer Coalition. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, their certification was um, waylaid this year by COVID, but hopefully next year I'll be able to go through that process to become certified. And once that happens, um, then my hope is to advocate for clinical trials, mm -hmm. for research, um, for legislation that helps protect breast cancer survivors, help them get better access to care. Right now right. the metastatic breast right. cancer 
uh, Access to Care Act is um, being uh, pushed hopefully uh, into being so that right. folks who have metastatic breast cancer can access things like Medicare without the waiting period yeah. that typically happens when they get disability under Social Security. So those are the things that I really want to make a difference in and I want to, to advocate on a national level. Right. Um, but I, I never want to stop working with the survivors and the patients that are going through mm -hmm. it because I feel like that is truly my calling now, and that's where well, I'm supposed to be. Well, and I think with you and your personality, I kind of know you a little bit. I think, <laughs> I think you have the inner desire to help people. Obviously, your yes. career choice, and I also feel like you are a giver, and that's what we have so much in common in that aspect. You are a giver, and you want to scoop people up and help them. And going to Capitol Hill and advocating and, and doing the things that you're going to do on the national level is going to change so many people's lives right. because it just needs to be done. And it needs, needs to be done by people that have been there, done that. And that is you. Right. You have been there, done that, came out on the other side. To me, a stronger person because yes. you went through this journey that was, quite frankly, you know, hell. Mm -hmm. And um, you, you came out and you're amazing and you're powerful and you you give 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 and I'm just so glad that you're here with me today to do this because it's just awesome oh thank you yeah. I'm so happy welcome. to be here you're so welcome I agree I agree I think that you know for me I'm on a medication now that mm -hmm. if it weren't for people before me that went through clinical trials mm -hmm. um, and offered to do clinical trials correct um, we, I wouldn't even have available to me. And it gives me um, a very, very good chance of never seeing breast cancer again in my life. Right. So, right. you know, those are the kinds of things I think, well, how much further can we go? I, we can we can find a cure. And why That's should we goal. shoot lower than that? Let's right. go, go for a cure. <laughs> go for gold. So, yeah, go for Go gold. for pink. <laughs> yeah. So um, those are the kinds of things I'm looking forward to being involved right. in and hopefully making a difference for the women that come behind us, for, for our children, for right. our grandchildren. Exactly. Um, exactly. So, for years yeah. to come. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. It's great. It's great. So let me see. I have a few questions here. I just have one more I want to ask you. Okay. Um, when you had your treatments, any tips for women that are facing chemo or radiation, um, these appointments with their doctors, any tips or anything you'd like to give them if they're just starting their journey. Absolutely. So depending on what, if you, if you are in a situation where you're facing more than surgery, mm -hmm. chemotherapy and radiation, what was very helpful to me was reaching out to, and immediately when I spread the word in my support group that what my path was going to be, I had four or five friends mm -hmm. who were survivors of various cancers calling me and saying, right. let me tell you what helped me. Let me tell you, I don't know what kind of chemo you're going through, but let me tell you what some of the side effects were for me and how I alleviated those. I reached out to you, mm -hmm. um, connected to an, onco uh, an oncology nurse right. um, through you, and she was able to say, okay, we're going to build your toolbox. Um, these are some of the side effects. We don't know which ones you're going to have until right. you, you start treatment, but mm -hmm. you want to have these things at home and on hand. Um, and so there were a lot of very practical things that I could do um, to just have, um, you know, just buying a soft toothbrush because chemo can hurt your gums, gums mm -hmm. and um, having things like either a diuretic or a, um, an anti-diarrheal or a you know laxative on hand because some mm -hmm. people have um, problems sure. with their digestive system. Um, so you know, just little things like that gave me a feeling of okay, I'm in control of some of this. Right. I can prepare. Um, I'm kind of a little bit of a control freak. I'm not gonna <laughs> lie. Um, mm. So knowing, having that knowledge, that was key to me. You know, and 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 feeling a little bit empowered, that was key to me. Right. Um, because it's uncharted territory. You know, most people don't go through chemo in their life. Hopefully. No, um, I agree. So or, mm -hmm. or those kinds of things. So. It was, it was definitely something that gave me a feeling of control and, mm -hmm. and helped lower the anxiety level because there were things that I could do. So I would say to reach out to those resources and educate yourself. Um, build your support system because you have a lot of friends who've had cancer and right. gone through treatment and they know what you're facing and they're going to be there for you. Um, and so that was the most helpful for me. And then just kind of you know keeping myself connected 
even though I wasn't necessarily able to go out and do all the things that I was doing when sure. I wasn't in treatment, sure. staying connected to my community. Right. And actually, social media is really good for that, um, for that purpose. I had a lot of support. I agree. Um, I agree. And that helped a lot, too. I totally agree with that. Yeah. Great. Thank yeah. you for those tips. They really matter. Yes. And the one thing, if I can add, you have to give yourself permission yes. to be angry, to be sad, to grieve, to sleep, to not do housework, to just take care of you. And that's one of the hardest things, first being a control freak, and second being a woman, yeah. because we do everything. We're yeah. moms, we're wives, we're daughters, we're caretakers. We do, 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 do. And then you get derailed. And the one thing you have to do is say, okay, I have to take care of me. Right. I have to literally take care of me. Yes. And that is something that I say quite frequently to my patients sitting across from the desk. Now it's time to take care of you. And spouses will come and they'll say, I got you, honey, but we don't like the way they fold the towels and we don't like the way they put the dishes away and we don't like, but we have to allow them to help in their way. Yeah. And they're just as afraid. They're just as scared. They're just as anxious. Um, maybe not quite as much as the patient, but they're they're in their own way. They're terrified. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. And we need to remember caregivers need just as much love, and they need it in a different way because they want to try to help, and they just need to be educated on how to help. Right. So communication is super important yes. in a family unit and your support group, yes. your personal support area, because you don't want to lash out just because you don't realize you're doing it. Right. Right. Absolutely. And you and Ron are amazing. You guys are. Yeah. I'm very lucky. I'm he's very a, lucky. Oh, he's an amazing guy. Yeah. You're very, very lucky. Yes. Yeah. So. Yes. And, but it is hard to ask for help. Mm -hmm. That was one thing that I learned. And, and one of the tips that was given to me, ask for help. You know, stop being right. the strong one. Stop being the capable one. Right. Allow yourself to. Exactly. Be the one who needs mm -hmm. um, the support and needs the help. And. Um, that, that was difficult. It was hard. You know, very hard. especially with, with, even though my boys were young adults at the time, allowing them to be there for me emotionally and right. not just putting on a brave face all the time um, was probably one of the most powerful. Well, moments. and one of your sons is a physician. Yeah. So that had to be a little bit challenging because he wanted to probably take care of mom. We actually um, had a boundary around that because of the fact that. He understood probably more um, than he wanted to. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so it was a little bit like, okay, we're going to do ignorance is bliss on the medical side. He did involve himself when it came to deciding on the treatment plan. But after that, I th we kind of decided it was all going to just be mom and son and not mom and doctor son. That's good. And that's good. he was there for me emotionally, but he s let my doctors do their job. Oh, that's good. <laughs> that's probably hard for him, but that's good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's I think good. it was a relief, actually. Oh, okay. That's good. That's so good. <laughs> so, yeah. so, yeah, that's great. Yeah, that's great. Well, one of the questions you had for me was, what is the most challenging part of your job? Yes. All of it. <laughs> so one of the most challenging parts of my job, um, I would say, is really just having a patient understand it's a speed bump. It's not going to be a joy ride, but it's a speed bump, and we can certainly get you through this. Yes. That is a very challenging part. It is. It's a very, very challenging part. And um, the, the most joyous part of my job is the sigh of relief of <sighs> hearing the bell ring when you're done with treatment or just watching the look on their face change when they realize, I got this. Yeah. I'm Wonder Woman. I can handle this. Um, if you've been in my office, I have a wall that's covered in um, um, beautiful artwork, and one of my um, pieces on my wall is a Wonder Woman. And I tell patients when they're like really, really angst, I say, turn around and see that? That's you. You're a Wonder Woman. You can do this. You just have to believe in yourself. And that, to me, when they finally see that and say, I can do this. It's not that hard. Yeah. I can do this. I got it. It's such a wonderful feeling. Yeah. And it's you don't feel like that at the beginning. And that's no, okay. No, you don't. Because it is such an unknown at the, at the right. front end of it. Right. Um, and that's the other thing. You have to, at some point, you do sort of accept, okay, mm -hmm. life's mm -hmm. different now. Right. Um, but it's, it's, it's 
absolutely you're in control of so much more of this process correct um, if you educate yourself and really are an active advocate for yourself mm -hmm. um, I think that that's that's key too to coming out of it and thinking okay I did everything I could have done I educated myself I made informed mm -hmm. decisions mm -hmm. and everything that could be done was done and now uh, you just you know, you find a way to cope through and move on, and you do embrace that survivorship. Right, survivorship. Yeah. On that note, we do have here at Halifax Health a survivorship nurse navigator. Yes. Her name is Susan Joss. She is a rock star. She has 30 plus years um, in oncology. She does take all cancer patients from the survivorship point, once you're kind of completed with everything, and she really does carry them through yeah. the survivor part of the journey. You've recently met with Susan, and yeah. she's just awesome. She will really take you under her wing and, and yeah. make sure you're compliant with appointments and, and answer those questions that you have. It right. might be, um, you know, something simple as, you know, do I still see my oncologist after so many years? Do I do, what lab work do I do? What do I have to do? She's awesome. She does that. Yes. And then here at Halifax Health, we also have um, a genetic navigator. We have a head, neck, and lung navigator. We have a rehab navigator, which you recently met, Ashley. Yes. She, um, she is our Brooks Halifax Health uh, rehab navigator that evaluates patients for lymphedema and in the breast world and much other things and other cancers but lymphedema is a big piece of right, right. surgery uh, post-op surgery issues and she's great she does those things um, and we also have case managers we have a new dietitian we have a lot going yes. on we have yes. a lot going on weren't you on the be well trial i am i'm on a clinical trial right. um, actually this will wrap up in january for me because mm -hmm. that'll be my two-year mark right um and what happened uh actually i became uh eligible for the clinical trial during cancer during my chemo treatment mm -hmm. because during the last 12 weeks of chemo um i was given uh, a dose every week and with a lot of steroids so i was kind of gaining weight every week because <laughs> steroids made me eat like I was getting paid for it. Um, so well, you get paid for eating? I wish. <laughs> you pay for eating, trust me, because then I had to lose the 30 uh. pounds. So anyway, um, um. I, the Be Well program is a national clinical trial. It's for women who are in the overweight category after being diagnosed with breast cancer. I was at the end of chemo, I became eligible because I gained so much weight. You know? <laughs> Um, so mm -hmm. I signed up for that, mm -hmm. and it's nutritional counseling. It's um, just an entire holistic wellness program. Mm -hmm. And so, luckily, um, after two years, I'm back down to my <laughs> normal size but, and healthy. Um, you know, that's the biggest investment that I've made is um, in my health is nutrition and regular exercise. I walk every day. That's I great. love Pilates. You have a new puppy. Yes, we yes. have a new rescue puppy, Charlie, yes. so he has to be walked every day, and there's <laughs> consequences for that. So um, anyway, so those are the things that right. keep, keep me going, and lower risk factors for any recurrence. Correct, yes. So those are the things that you, you tend to concentrate on after treatment. Mm -hmm. And you worked with our clinical trial team. I did. Yes, Debbie Reynolds did Debbie and Reynolds her team. And yes. Her, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's so that's great. Yeah, I'll see yes. her again in January. Absolutely. So it's a very very good and, and it was something that I could do. Uh, basically, mm -hmm. it's um, looking to prove the theory that maintaining a healthy weight and exercising regularly reduces recurrence of breast cancer. It seems to it's true. make sense. It makes sense. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, we have to prove that through research. So obesity and lack of exercise are definitely a risk factor. Life to, yes. yes, they're definitely So a what risk are the factor. other risk factors for people so who don't know? So definitely um, smoking um, and a few things that I'd like to say about getting your screening mammogram is don't be afraid of it. Age 40, make sure you get your screening mammogram, 3Ds. Um, and if you are having trouble with access to 3D mammograms or imaging in any aspect, we have a care line here at Halifax Health. It's called 425-PINK, P-I-N-K. And when you call that care line, um, I personally answer it, and we can definitely assist you with getting you in for imaging, getting you in w for a breast exam if needed, and just answering questions about breast concerns. That's a really important care line that we offer here. We also have a 425 lung, 
um, care line for any lung cancer patients or lung concerns, we have that care line as well. Um, that's the beautiful part about Halifax is we offer these services complimentary, and right. I love that. Um, well, I thank you so much. Oh, Do you have anything else you want to add? Thanks for inviting me. I don't think so, but it's been a pleasure talking with you. Yeah. I hope that we got some good information out for I people agree. who have questions. Does anybody have any questions out in Facebook land? I don't. Everybody's saying they love you. <laughs> they love you too. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of funny to see that up there. Isn't it, it is. I know. It is. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, well, thank you again. I love you dearly. I love you from the too. bottom of my heart. Thank you. Java with Jennifer. Yay! Thank you, Edna.